Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. In this video, we will focus on French military intervention in Chad during 1980s, and more precisely, on their use of Mirage F1 fighter. Since its independence in 1960, Chad has gone through a very complicated political situation with various factions confronting each other militarily. Explaining the nature of this civil war is far beyond the scope of this video. Factors which made the situation even more complicated were foreign military interventions by Libya and France. Libya first intervened in 1981. It then pulled back but intervened again in June of 1983. This prompted the French to launch Operation Manta in support of then Chadian president, Hissène Abré, whose forces fought against those supported by Libya. It was the largest French military operation since colonial times. The aircraft component of the operation included six Jaguar fighter bombers and four Mirage F1s deployed to N'Djamena, nation's capital. Operation's objective was relatively limited. It was to secure the position of Abre's government and contain Libyans and their allies in the northern part of Chad, above the 15th parallel. Libyans had a very strong presence in northern Chad, including several air bases with about 90 aircraft types such as Mirage F1, Mirage 5, Sukhoi Su-22 and Tupolev Tu-22. In this period, they mostly stayed above this so-called red line, and only a few encounters between the French and Libyan aircraft were reported, but none resulted in use of weapons. One incident in which French Jaguars and Mirages were involved occurred when Libyan-supported Gunt forces attacked government forces supported by France, killing many of them and kidnapping two Belgian medical workers. The retreating gunned column was found by French aircraft, and when they attempted to establish their identity, they came under ground fire and requested permission to attack. Permission was not given, and two French Jaguars and a Mirage if one retreated. One hour later, the insurgent group was again detected by another French flight consisting of two Jaguars and one Mirage if one. They too came under fire from the insurgents, now placed underneath palm trees. While trying to establish which vehicles might have been carrying the kidnapped Belgians, one Jaguar was shot down. The pilot failed to eject and was killed. Remaining French aircraft then attacked the insurgents with gunfire. They destroyed several technicals, but the Mirage F1 was damaged. It nevertheless managed to return to N'Djamena. The French kept building up their forces, but the operation was unpopular with the French public, and any further incidents were deliberately given low attention. One more Jaguar was shot down, and then Libyans offered a unilateral withdrawal from Chad. The French were happy to withdraw as well, which they completed by November 1984. Gaddafi's withdrawal, however, was fake. For the next couple of years, French Air Force flew reconnaissance flights over Chad and tensions seemed to be lessening, but that would soon change. In February 1986, the French again sent their forces to Chad under Operation Epervier. 
The initial goal was to stop another Libyan invasion and capture of nation's capital, N'Djamena. This operation included a successful attack on Libyan airbase Wadi Doum in northern Chad by 12 French Air Force Jaguars on 16 February 1986. The Libyans responded by a Tupolev 222 strike against N'Djamena airport the next day. This prompted the deployment of Mirage F1s and SAM systems such as Krotal and Hawk to the airport. This was immediately caught by a Libyan MiG-25R on a reconnaissance flight. Libyans attempted another 222 attack, but this time the aircraft was detected on time. Two Mirage F1s were scrambled and the bomber turned away. Things were not looking well for the Libyans. They and their gunned allies suffered a string of defeats, which they tried to reverse by heavy use of their air force. In May 1986, French ground radars detected a Libyan MiG-25 approaching the area where ground battles were being fought. A pair of Mirage F1s was scrambled to intercept the MiG. At first, the French pilots reported reaching maximum altitude and not being able to catch the Foxbat. Then, however, the Libyan pilot turned northwards, which enabled the Mirages to cut his turn. They called visual and attained a radar lock. Unfortunately for them, the French headquarters in N'Djamena refused to give them permission to shoot. A unique opportunity for the F-1 to distinguish itself was lost. Another opportunity for Mirage pilots to intervene was when Chadian President Abre celebrated the liberation of his hometown, Paya Largo. Two French F-1s flew combat air patrols over the town when the Libyan Il-76 approached the area. It was quickly intercepted and the Mirages fired several warning shots across its nose. This forced the Libyan airplane to quickly depart the area. As Gaddafi was losing battle after battle to Chadian government forces, he ordered a large ground counteroffensive and more Tupolev 222 raids. On 7 September 1986, two French Mirage F1s took off from N'Djamena on a combat air patrol supported by a tanker aircraft. They were flown by Lieutenants Delanoy and Briel. At 6.55, French ground radar detected an unknown aircraft approaching over Nigerian airspace. It didn't respond to IFF interrogations, so the two Mirages were vectored to intercept it. They experienced difficulties with achieving a lock-on. This was due to jamming, and the Mirages were told to turn away. The responsibility for the defense of N'Djamena airport was given to the Hawk SAM site. The incoming aircraft was a Libyan 222 flying in an international airline corridor to mask his approach. When the Hawk site achieved the lock-on, the 222 descended to 4,000 meters and accelerated. As it approached within 13 kilometers, the decision to open fire was made. The first launcher malfunctioned, but the second one worked. The missile scored a direct hit and the Tupolev bomber fell only a few hundred meters from a French army camp.
tensions were still high on 9 September when an unknown aircraft was detected between the so-called Red Line and Anjamena. Two Mirage F1s intercepted it and the flight leader identified it as an Il-76. Ground control asked for a confirmation to which the leader replied, affirmative, order for destruction. As his finger was on the trigger, the wingman called and identified the aircraft as a C-141 Starlifter. Close visual inspection confirmed it and the airplane was forced to land at N'Djamena. Apparently, the American pilot failed to read notices about hazard along flight routes and wandered into the no-fly zone. On 11 September, Libyan and Chadian governments agreed to a ceasefire. In 1988, the conflict was officially over and the French military contingent in Chad started to decrease. Overall, the involvement of French Mirage F1 in Chad was not spectacular. It didn't achieve any air kills, although it came close and the encounter with the MiG-25 might have ended in a spectacular fashion. This never was an open conflict between France and Libya, so rules of engagement played a very important role. The French were never able to completely prevent the Libyans from flying over the southern part of Chad, but they must have seriously limited them. The F-1 was also used by the Libyan side, although they apparently never met. If you liked the video, don't forget to press the like button. The channel has recently become an Amazon affiliate, so if you want to buy any of the books we use as sources from Amazon, please use the links from our video description. You will pay the same price, but your favorite channel will get a small percentage. This way you can support us and make future content more likely. Thank you in advance.